Live from the Multi-GP Headquarters, this is Multi-GP News. This week on Multi-GP News, seven regional qualifiers wrapping up from Maryland all the way to sunny California. Multi-GP News with a full breakdown of all the racing action. Plus, a major league baseball player was working on his quad one minute and ended up in the emergency room the next. Wait till you hear what sent this pro pitcher to the hospital. Also, we're taking you to the sailing capital of the world where we meet our feature chapter of the week. What's up, everyone? I'm Chris Thomas. And I'm Frank Realize Minute. All this and much more coming up. Welcome back to our Sunday edition of MultiGP News. Let's begin with our 2017 Regional Series update. Last week, we saw five regional qualifiers come to an end from Washington State to Louisiana. And this week, seven more qualifiers were held from coast to coast. MultiGP News has the breakdown. The Regional Series heating up with a whopping seven chapters holding qualifiers in their region last week. We start off in the Golden State where Team Balin held their qualifier in Region 6A. 32 pilots joining forces in the 95 degree heat to compete for their chance at the qualifying spots in the race. The biggest challenge for many of these pilots was the enormous 5x5 five five foot dive gate. Ed Adventures, Pitch Roll Yaw and Tattoo sponsoring the event, offering food and some prizes and giveaways for the competing pilots. After a sizzling day of competition and several heats later, seven pilots earned their way to the finals. Coming in seventh was Arborist. Sixth, Tone FPV. Fifth, Fairy. Fourth, UFO. Third, Lance FPV. Humboldt 710 coming in second and Aaron Inverse Jones taking the top spot in the race. Now moving to the Midwest, Collective RC hosting their 4A qualifier in Oklahoma City. With 23 registered pilots and over 50 spectators, the event running smooth with a few pilots running into video issues, but an overall success. The track was high speed, but not a battery burner for pilots who flew smart. The biggest attraction, a dive gate named Plinko. Pilots hitting the gate throughout the day, making the infamous Plinko sound. A grudge match, a mini game of pop the balloon, and some LED night racing wrapping up the event. The qualifier, which was sponsored by Race Flight, FPV Direct, Flynosaurus, and Oklahoma Hobbies and RC, offering pilots a cash prize over $600 split between the top five competitors. Those spots going to Bupree for fifth, It'll Be Fun for fourth, Brain Drain DX third, Adma 20, and McGap taking the number one spot, winning $300 in cash. After a fun-filled day packed with tons of racing, five pilots moving on to the finals. The qualifying spots going to I Am Andrew, Handy Cock, Styx, Doughboy, and finally, Rec Law. And heading north to the Buckeye State, Cincinnati Quad Racers setting up their 3C qualifier with up to 35 pilots gearing up to race, with as many traveling more than two hours to compete. The weather was almost perfect, but some pilots were challenged by the windy conditions. The track was technical, and the fastest pilots only managed to run five laps in the two-minute heats. Two pilots, Nomad and the Don, just tenths of a second of getting six laps during a few heats. The battle for first came down to a tiebreaker between Nomad and Freeform FPV. There was also a four-way tie for the fifth and sixth qualifier spot. Ji Yoon had a large lead over the pack, earning the fifth spot, while Roscoe FPV had Buck Edge and Boomerang FPV right behind his tail. Ultimately, Back Edge and Boomerang FPV crashed out, easing Roscoe FPV's frustration. In the end, eight pilots advancing to the 3C finals in Detroit. Boomerang FPV, Back Edge, Roscoe FPV, Ji Yoon, Travesty, The Dawn, Freeform FPV, and Jesse Nomad. Now moving upstate to the central western region of New York, Rotor Stars and NLFPV hosting their qualifier with 42 pilots traveling from Pennsylvania, Ohio, and Ontario to race. The event had tons of sponsors from Readymade RC, Venom, Hobico, Detroit Multirotor, to CNHL Battery, Tattoo, and APC Props. There was also over $2,500 in cash and prizes for those competing. The track was made up of a UTT mix with a few features from the finals course. 
And the most challenging part of the track was the short dive gate. Closing out the fun-filled day, which involved tiny whoops on the LED micro track, from non-limit FPV, six pilots made it to the finals. Those pilots are Opbots, McSkies, Dockerton, Hawk X, and 14-year-old Bull FPV, who almost got disqualified because he was Canadian, but was allowed to move on thanks to a quick review by Chris Thomas. Pass 214 taking the number one spot in the race. Meanwhile, in Omaha, Nebraska, Prowler FPV kicked off their regional qualifier with nearly 29 pilots traveling from Nebraska, Ohio, Missouri, Kansas, and South Dakota to compete. The biggest obstacle for pilots was the Gorilla Cage. Mid-American Multirotor sponsored prizes for the five qualifiers who are Trip D27, NSFPV, Mid Tricks, High Voltage, Darren, Shoeface 76, and Dunder Chief coming in first. Finally, we're taking you to the southeastern region of the country where Raleigh Rotor Racers held their 1B regional qualifier with some pilots traveling from Fairfax, Virginia to race for their chance at the finals. The event running smooth from beginning to end. After battling out several heats, eight pilots moving on to the finals. Those pilots are Sonic Sparrow, Iceberg, Rathborn, Matt Fade, Nick G FPV, Mad Crafted, Flippin FPV, and Evan BBQ. Congratulations to all the pilots moving on to the regional finals. For all your updated regional series information and a list of upcoming qualifiers or finals, head to multigp.com and click on the Drone Racing Championship tab. And we've got much more coming up. We're heading up north to Maryland, where we introduce you to our feature chapter of the week. Plus, he's a pro pitcher for the Cleveland Indians, but also loves flying quads. Find out how MLB star Trevor Bauer got introduced to FPV. Welcome back. We've kicked off a new segment here where we'll introduce you to our fellow multi-GP chapters around the country. This week, we'll take you to the sailing capital of the world where we meet Tier 1 chapter, the Maryland Quad Racers. Multi-GP News has their story. We're off to the sailing capital of the world where we introduce you to chapter organizer Matthew Crouch from the Maryland Quad Racers. I've probably been flying FPV from two and a half years or so. There was a, a three, four month section there where I was just flying line of sight uh, before I saved up for a pair of goggles and everything. So something like two and a half years, I think. The chapter was created just a little over a year ago, but has already gained tons of pilots in their region, over 180 of them. Their Facebook group also has up to 450 members. Matthew owing some of that success to their location. Yeah, we're really lucky with geographically where we are. Uh, we're right in the middle of Baltimore and DC, and then of course Delaware, New Jersey, Pennsylvania, Virginia. We pull people from all over the place. Matthew and his wife are mainly the two who run all the races for the Maryland Quad Racers. And if it wasn't for his better half, the events wouldn't have run as smoothly as they do now. My wife does a lot at the events. Um, so when we were first getting started and we had 10 or 15 people at events, I was doing everything and running like crazy. And then she started coming and running the timing system. And that was awesome because then I could start actually thinking about flying and not just wrangling other people to fly when they needed to. So she helped me out a ton. And it's a question most organizers have to face at the end of the day. Who's going to help break down the track? Recently, I've seen people saying, yeah, I, I make sure prizes don't go out until the track's at least next to the trailer or whatever. Um, I don't really do that, although after the last weekend, I'm thinking maybe that's not a bad idea. Like many other organizers, Matthew loves to race. In fact, he stresses that he's a pilot first and an organizer second. Almost always I race. Um, there's been one race that I sat out just to kind of see what this is like without racing. Uh, and the event ran smoother. I was definitely able to do more as the organizer, but I hated it because I'm a pilot first. <laughs> and some tips Matthew would like to recommend to multi-GP officers. There are times I think in the 
in the organizers group where you you want like I'll post there because I want the community to learn from whatever I'm I'm doing but I might need a staffer's opinion on something um, so I tag them in it and sometimes you don't get a very quick response now if you want to become a chapter organizer here's what Matthew suggests so I've mentored a lot of chapters uh, and one of the things I try to tell all of them is don't necessarily do everything the way I do it. Uh, and a lot of those things that I do, I came up with because I went and visited other chapters while we were growing. At the Organizer Summit in Muncie at the championship last year, Joe Scully was talking about uh, him running events and I think he said, always drink the Haterade. Uh, whether it's somebody else's event or if it's my event. If you would like your chapter featured in an upcoming episode, email us at news at multigp.com. He's an MLB baseball player who not only enjoys flying FPV, but he has a passion for building his own frames. Multigp News reporter Kelara Maynard spoke with Trevor Bauer, who shows us one of his latest quad designs. 26-year-old Cleveland Indians pitcher Trevor Bauer is not only passionate about his professional baseball career, but has discovered another thrilling sport that gives him the satisfaction he craves. There's the drones racing through the forest, and it reminds me of Star Wars, like chase scene on Endor. And I was a huge Star Wars fan, and I'm still a huge Star Wars fan, so I was like, that's sick, I gotta learn how to do that, and so I started teaching myself. While he barely has any free time during baseball season, the pro pitcher makes sure to squeeze in some flight time when he can. Yeah, it's tough to get involved in any races because in the off season, that's the you know, there's not as many races in the off season as there is in the summer. And then I still travel a lot in the off season. I'm up in the Seattle area quite a bit, in Texas and LA. And if I go on any vacations and whatnot, I'm you know overseas wherever I may be. So it's hard to find time in between training to actually get out to a race. Traveling across the country for games gives Trevor an opportunity to burn some packs in some breathtaking places. He's also managed to fly on the baseball field, but was quickly stopped in his tracks by security before getting a chance to explore the park. I was flying a drone at like 12 o'clock before 7 o'clock game when there was no one on the field. No one even at the stadium, like the people hadn't even started cleaning yet, and then Security. I would put it up in the air and literally like 20 seconds into the flight, I'd be surrounded by security. Like, hey, you gotta, you can't fly that thing here. Bauer was a mechanical engineer major while at UCLA and has developed a fascination with building quads. In fact, his first drone was designed by himself after taking a quick trip to a hardware store. I built my own like frame the first time. This is before frames were really like available. This is my most recent one. I like this one quite a bit because it's, um, the battery is protected, it can't fly out in a crash, and it's protected from the propellers, and it's, it's, you know, light. Just last year, Trevor had a bizarre accident with his drone where he sliced his pinky finger almost completely off. It, this finger was in the way of motor number two, and as soon as the leads touched, motor number two spun up at full throttle. The, rest, the other three of them didn't do anything, obviously like they're supposed to be out of short in the equipment or something. I touched it, my pinky happened to be in the way, and it cut me three times before I could get my pinky out of the way. Um, just like sliced me in the open. And I like looked down, and I was like, I saw my bone, I saw my blood bubbling out, and I was like, that's probably not good. As soon as the baseball season is over, Trevor plans to attend a few of the multi-GP races in Cleveland. But yeah, if you guys have races set up or something, let me know and I can, I'll try to get out to them because I'd love to do that. And remember, if you have a story and would like to let us know, please email us at news at multigp.com. Coming up, our weekly Crash of the Week compilation. And stick around, because some of these collisions are explosive. Welcome back, everyone. First, I want to thank everyone for sending us your crashes each week. Keep them coming. Now, last week, we asked our viewers to send us a few quad explosion clips, and we sort of got what we asked for. It's amazing. Should be pretty cool. So roll that Crash of the Week video.
Although the explosive video effects were pretty funny, we're still looking for that epic crash. If you've got what we're looking for, email your video to news at multigp.com. I want to see one where you've got like eight quads come together and it's a major explosion, but something flies when it's all said and done. That's what I'm looking for. Yeah, cameras and parts just getting ripped off and flying all over the place. Yep. That's all the time we have for this episode of MultiGP News. Don't forget to catch our show Saturday and Sundays on our MultiGP YouTube channel. It's the place you should always be going to get all your important information. And finally, we're aiming to reach 10,000 subscribers by the end of the year. So remember to like, share, and subscribe. And don't forget to click that little bell icon so you can get all the updates from us. Finally, I'm Frank Maynard. And I'm Chris Thomas. Thanks for joining us. If you like this video, press the like button below. And please don't forget to subscribe to our channel. Thanks for watching. If you're interested in being showcased in the next episode of MultiGP News, please contact us at news at multigp.com.